what is the single most you'll understand it when you're older thing. Understanding why your parents wanted you to go play with the awkward kid, or why they were so keen to help you make friends. It's beyond annoying as a kid when your parents try to guide who make friends with, but most parents instinctually know that bad social habits start early, are hard to break, and can be a real burden when you are older. My mom never liked my friend group and it really annoyed me. Looking back half of them were assholes anyway and the other half were already doing things that led them into a life of drug addiction after high school. I never got into drinking and drugs like that but everyone around me was doing it and I had every opportunity to. Looking back she was just looking out for me and even though she didn't have proof of what we were doing she was just an adult who had lived and could tell it wasn't a good group if friends. I have no idea how I made it to where I am today. Not that I have a crazy awesome life. But considering the opportunity I had for fucking up it's a little surprising. From 15 to 18 I was kind of a delinquent. Never got caught but I was still doing some stuff. Lots of underage drinking and lots of weed. Most my friends that I hung out with outside of school were not good influences. But I graduated, left for college, and never went back. So many times where life could have gone another way. Friendships fading away. I remember my dad telling me all kinds of cool stories about things him and his friends did in the past. I even asked him why aren't you still friends with these people. He really did basically say it's complicated, you'll understand when you're older. Even back then I remember thinking that's crazy, me and my friends will always be friends. Sitting here now in my early 30s and it really hits home. Losing best friends is the hardest. It's definitely like a breakup emo. It hurts your heart but in a different way. My heart still really aches to this day how my best friend became my ex-best friend. Edit, thank you to who gave me the silver. It's a first. Really glad I'm not alone in BF heartaches. Edit to edit, your stories and sharing, I wanna reply to all of them and, and give you all bye ee -e hugs. I'm a huge empathy and I've been tearing up and crying because I feel for every one of you. Thank you for hugs and silver but I wish I could give you all real hugs and silver in return. Yeah, to me losing one of my best friends was worse than when my boyfriend broke up with me. Dating is a binary thing, you're either dating or not, and you can only date one person. It makes sense when someone doesn't want to commit to you like that, and you can rationalize the breakup and feel a bit better. They get a benefit from breaking up, they can do a lot of things they wouldn't do in an exclusive relationship. Friendships aren't like that though. You don't have to be exclusive to be best friends, you can have other friends too. So if your best friend doesn't want to be friends anymore, it's impossible not to take it personally. Your friend doesn't gain any new freedoms or experiences by ending your friendship. Which means he slash she really doesn't like you at all and would choose not having a friend over being friends with you. I feel this. Last year, one of my best friends told me he never wanted to talk to me again, a week after I got dumped by this girl I was dating. The friend breakup hurt so much more. I'd sent him a long olive branch sort of text initially, because I sensed he was distancing himself and I had some ideas as to why, for which I apologized. A few weeks passed before he sent me a scathing email. It really hurt because he confirmed the distance was for those reasons I'd suspected, but my apology wasn't going to be enough for him. He'd held in all of these concerns about me and it hit a boiling over point that he couldn't contain anymore. It hurt like hell and sent me into a spiral for weeks, even months. Fortunately, some mutual friends told him how the email impacted me and we started talking again when I visited the city they live in later last year. Now, we're discussing traveling abroad together after COVID runs its course. Why elderly people in nursing homes who get no visitors are so lonely and filled with despair. We had to put my mom in a home because we physically could not care for her anymore. She didn't want to be there and we didn't want her to be. But there weren't any other options. My dad was there every day until he got sick and died. My sister and I stopped in a couple of times a week each. The last month of her life I was there every day. I hope she knew I did the best I could to take care of her. 
I'm sure she did. The most valuable thing you can do is give your time and it sounds like you did exactly that. She definitely knew Black Heart. Time, wasting time, and how time flies. It's mid dis and I'm saying to myself what the heck it's been 9 months of COVID and I can't believe this year is almost over. As you age it seems to go faster and faster. When I was younger I felt like time just dragged on some days. I can remember when I was school age, the year seemed to drag on forever, then when it did end we had the 6 weeks holidays. 6 whole weeks. With hour upon hour of sunshine, towards the end of it school was but a distant memory. It felt like it would never end. Of course it always did when September finally arrived. Now I work at a school and it's terrifying how quickly we blaze through each term, those same holidays are over in a flash. I think it's because now I'm older I'm consciously worried about making the most of the time off, not wasting it. When I was young the biggest worry was whether my friends and I would play in the woods or on the fell that day. Time wasn't a worry, we thought we had all the time in the world. I think it's other stuff too. Like the older you get, and the more responsibility you get, more shit needs to be done. So it's always a feeling of this is when this needs to be done or this is when I can expect this to happen. You, for most adults, know exactly what you'll be doing after the holiday. Things need to be prepared. So the time you have off you cherish it more which makes it seem like less than what it is. Because you have to do more with the time you have left. That's one reason I want to be wealthy one day. Not for the money or a big house or anything. To be able to afford to just spend time alone. Being happy, or doing things that don't cause me stress all the time. Even the stress as small as checking email after not looking at it for a day or two. As kids we didn't have that. We knew that school was starting but beyond that, there was no responsibility to be met, or no impending deadlines for work. So time goes slower when you don't value it, and take it for granted. Like imagine being bored for an hour and being in a room vs being super busy with work and behind on deadlines with only an hour less. The first bored hour will seem more long and you'll find stuff to do like join a chess club play sports recreationally, or read a book. But with the busy hour it feels like there literally isn't enough time in the day at that pace. That's how I think it works but just like expand hour to your whole life. That's just my theory. Might be completely wrong. But regardless of the reason time seems to speed up, I hate that it doesn't work the other way around.